international requirements exist to ensure electric mobility aids can be safely carried by air, and how this is done depends on the type of battery which is fitted. For all types, battery terminals must be protected against short circuit, installed batteries must be securely attached to the mobility aid, and electric mobility aids must be protected against unintentional activation. Mobility aids with spillable batteries must be loaded and kept upright at all times. However, if this is not possible, perhaps because of the height of the hold ceiling, batteries must be removed and packed in strong, leak-proof packagings with enough absorbent material to absorb all of the acid should it leak. The package must bear a corrosive hazard warning label. Batteries must be removed from an electric mobility aid that is specifically designed to allow this for ease of transport, for example if the device is collapsible. Non-spillable batteries removed from such a device must be carried in strong, rigid packagings which must be stowed in the hold. Removed lithium-ion batteries must be carried in the passenger cabin and be protected from short circuit and damage. Batteries must not exceed 300 watt hours. A maximum of one additional spare battery not exceeding 300 watt hours or two spares each not exceeding 160 watt hours may be carried. These must also be carried in the cabin. For batteries manufactured after 2011, the watt hour rating will be marked on the outside case. The pilot in command must be notified of the loading location of any mobility aid fitted with a wet acid or lithium ion battery, any non-spillable battery removed from a collapsible device and stowed in the hold, and any lithium battery removed from a collapsible device and stowed in the cabin. In 2008, ground staff offloading a passenger aircraft noticed blue sparks coming from a battery-powered wheelchair. It was quickly removed onto a baggage belt, where it immediately burst into flames and was destroyed. The electric circuit had not been protected from operation, and during flight, baggage probably moved the joystick control, engaging the motor, causing friction or electrical load to ignite the wheelchair. There are many different types of uh, mobility aids, often specific to the end user's requirements. Power chairs are often intended for long-term usage to alleviate medical conditions and provide postural support. Seating systems and headrests are often configured for the specific user, and this is why it's essential to ask the passenger whether these can be removed for air travel. Some may be bolted to the backrest of the chair. As you can see, the batteries on this device are fully enclosed by the casing, which protects the terminals from short circuit. Older devices may have exposed terminals which must be protected, for example, by using insulation tape. It is very difficult to move an electric mobility aid when the drive system is engaged. This may also damage the motors or braking system. All powered wheelchairs and scooters have a freewheel mechanism allowing the product to be pushed and manoeuvred as required. There should be labels showing how this is selected. On a power chair, this may be done by pushing levers up like so or by rotating a lever like so. There will be a lever for each drive wheel. The freewheel mechanism should be disengaged after loading and at any other time the device is to be left unattended. Switching off a power chair may not prevent accidental activation. Even with the best efforts of loading staff to properly secure loads, there is the potential for baggage or cargo to move in flight and this may accidentally switch devices back on. The circuits must therefore be inhibited. The easiest and quickest way to inhibit circuits is by inserting an air safe plug into the charging socket. This makes the device think it's being charged and so inhibits it from driving even if the on switch is actuated accidentally. If no air safe plug is available, it's necessary to break the power supply between the batteries and the electronic controller. This is achieved by separating or unplugging power cables as specified by the manufacturer. Connectors like these may be located under the seat or under a shroud near the batteries. They are separated by gently squeezing and pulling each side apart. On some products, cables plug directly into the body of the power chair or into the joystick controller. Most connectors and plugs are shrouded to protect the terminals inside from any short circuit, but if you find any exposed terminals, protect these with insulation tape. The BHTA log explains how the appropriate cable plug or connector is found for each power chair listed. This is a scooter. Freewheel is selected by moving a lever in an upward or downward movement 
as indicated by the labelling on the device. If the scooter has a key to activate it, turn to the off position, remove the key and give it to the passenger for safekeeping. Otherwise, to inhibit the circuit, insert an air safe plug or separate the cable connector nearest the battery and protect any exposed terminals. Lifting equipment should be used when loading heavier mobility aids. When positioning in the aircraft, only handle power chairs and scooters using an accessible structural part of the frame. Regardless of battery type, power chairs and scooters should not be stowed on the sides, as this can cause damage that might prevent use of the aid upon arrival.